Welcome back to the Wardenburg Family Farm. Hey honey, what are we doing today? Well, we are spinning honey. Honey, join us as we have fun today. All right, it's time to spin some honey. It's not normally the time of year to spin uh, in late winter, but we lost a hive, so we're gonna take advantage of some of the, uh, the full frames that we have. Let me show you what a frame looks like if you're not familiar with it. Um, you can see it's a wooden frame with a poly, and you can see the bees started working this over, and that's all honeycomb. And they do that in preparation for filling it with either honey, or that's where they lay their eggs. And I'm going to show you one other frame that is more developed. And uh, like right here, you can see the bottom here, they haven't worked it yet. And then it's progressively building up until the top side over here is capped honey. That's what we're really looking for because that's the mature honey that has the uh, proper moisture level and that is nature's pure food that'll last forever. So we're gonna spin some of these frames. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to um, uncap the honey. So we'll get set up here and show you how we do it. Okay, as you can see, this is capped honey. And in order to get all of that good honey out of there, we have to uncap it. Now there's two ways also of harvesting honey. One is if you don't have an extractor, you can, um, with the tool, just go and scrape all of the honeycomb and the honey into a container, and then you let it sit over um, screens that will allow the honey to go into the bucket and you keep the honeycomb above. But if you have a lot of frames like we do, then it's helpful to have an extractor. That's what we're gonna use. So. We need to uncap the honey. There's two ways to uncap the honey. One is with a knife, or even some guys have heated knives. Now, if they build out the comb out beyond um, the wooden frame, then this knife will be nice to uncap it. Uh, unfortunately, there's areas that are underneath it that won't be cut with this knife, so you have to use um, this comb to just break off the tops. So let's see how this one goes here. Um, just cutting, cutting the tops off and see if we can uncap this. Look at that beautiful shiny honey underneath there. And this is really thick and viscous so it takes a little effort. I see why some people spend the extra and get a heated knife. You know, like a hot knife through butter. But, now look at all that. There's good honey mixed in with that and we're going to capture all that by the way that we down but see I got some of it uncapped but not all of it so I'm going to next here use the comb and we're just going to go ahead and break the tops the caps off so that when we put this in the extractor and it spins the honey will be able to come flying out of all the honeycomb and it'll hit the walls of the extractor and then it will gravity will pull it all down look at that doesn't that look beautiful yum too bad you guys can't smell this this smells amazing yeah so that's only one side we have to do both sides on the other side here, they didn't build it out as far, so the knife isn't gonna reach any of these. So I'm just gonna use the comb and scrape over to break the tops. Okay, I 
uncapped eight frames. They're loaded in the honey extractor. And I want to show you what the uncapping looks like here in the container. If you look inside there, you can see a mixture of honey and the uncapping, which is the, um, the beeswax. Now, when we're finished and we process it, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a brick of beeswax. All of that will look like this when we're done. And of course, this, Wardenburg Family Farm Honey. And look at it. It's a nice, dark, raw honey. So it is filtered, but we do not pasteurize it. And it is not as filtered as um, some that you get in a grocery store. So bottom line, I think it's tastier. And because it has the natural elements in it, including pollen, it can help those of us that have um, allergies. Fortunately, I do not, but. <laughs> Okay, let's get the uh, extractor going. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to the manager of the filter department. <laughs> All right, well he's gonna push the button that makes it spin. And then what happens is it slings the honey out along the sides of this wonderful thing. It all runs down and comes out this little nozzle as soon as I open it up and then hopefully fall right through this filter and into the bucket. And now this, we'll have to see how quickly it fills up with the odds and end propolis and whatever, but I'll scoop some of that out and try to keep running through here so it doesn't overflow. That'd be my job. All right, it does take a while. It does. Okay, it's time to turn it on. Now the key is to start slowly. I'm gonna turn the uh, motor on and we're gonna go slowly so that it will balance out. rocking here I'm going to close the door so uh, it'll be safer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to have the door open. Yeah, I can already hear some of the honey hitting the side of the wall. Alright, I'm going to close it up and turn it up more. What are you gonna do, open it now? I'm gonna try to. There comes the honey. Okay. And it's a two layer filter, right? Yep, the top layer has bigger holes, bottom one has smaller ones. The honey's not super warm though, so it's not flowing real easy. But it'll go through, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> All right, so are you gonna swap them around? Let that, that one drain. I'll get the evidence going up a while. Okay, well I got another. Uh, another round to go. Yep, so I'm gonna go up and start uh, uncapping. Okay. Well, we ran into a glitch. I guess when you live in rural areas with a farm, we lose power more than most. So halfway through our honey spinning, the power's out. So I gotta go out, bring the tractor in and um, position it. We have a, uh, a generator that's a whole house generator that's powered by our diesel tractor. So we're gonna go hook it up and I guess this is a extra feature in today's show. Okay, now I just have to 
connect up, turn the uh, breaker on the uh, generator outside, and we should be good to go. Well, we had a pause in the uh, honey spinning action. Power's still out, but we have a generator run by the tractor. It's a 15 kW generator. So the whole house, whole farmhouse is operational. So back to the honey. You can hear the tractor running in the background. Yeah, and we're gonna do our second spin here. And just trying to uncap these. What a beautiful, beautiful frame. Look at all that capped honey. So what are you doing now? Putting it through the filter for the last time. This is the last filter before we bottle it. Okay. And that's the fine coarse filter. The fine, yes. Fine enough to get some stuff out, but it leaves in the pollen and any of the good stuff we want left in there. Yeah. So. I think it's a 650 micron. Something like that. 650 or 675, there's two. two what did you there. say, pollen is how many microns? Pollen is only 25 microns, so that, all the pollen stays in that. That's why it's raw honey. So we did put it through two filters last night. A coarser filter, which was how many microns? 1875. And then the finer one, put through once. But I like putting it through the finer one one more time just to make sure we didn't miss anything. So yeah. get anything we don't want out, but leave the good stuff in. Absolutely. What'd you say for, for the stuff in the stores? Well, this is raw honey because it's not pasteurized and it's not ultra filtered. An ultra filter, the commercial manufacturers take more of the pollen and, and other, I think, uh, healthy components out. Yeah. One of the reasons you want to eat honey, raw honey. Yeah. And you said some of the stores, they actually add sugar in some of the brands? Well, not the stores, they sell well, the but manufacturers. Some manufacturers do. If, if you get the really cheap bargain honey, some of them actually add sugar. Yeah. <laughs> if you've never tasted fresh raw honey there's a difference yeah really is i mean until we had the bees i had had honey from the store and i liked honey but i wasn't crazy about it as soon as i tasted this i love honey yeah i mean there is nothing like fresh raw let's, honey let's look closer here at the, the processing yeah. in there see it slowly drips out oh yeah you see it come running out of the bottom there we go and then we're dripping it into the bucket the final bucket that has a spout on it that we'll be able to pour it into the bottles from here. Mm -hmm. So those, what you see floating on there, those are just some bubbles. In air it, bubbles. Right? Yep. Air bubbles. Yeah. It does get air bubbles. Yeah. I think the other difference with the uh, raw honey, um, maybe the only downside, it's a minor inconvenience, but if you let it set into cold areas, then it, um, what, crystallizes? Yeah, it can crystallize. When just over time, within a year or so, it can start crystallizing. Um, but all you do if that happens, take your bottle of honey with the lid on it and just sit it in some warm water. Not boiling and not like really hot, but warm water. And it softens it all up and decrystallizes it and it's ready to go again. Good I mean, honey lasts forever. It's a perfect food. <laughs> it really is. And delicious. I mean, it's good on everything. <laughs> good. Can't wait to try it. Yep, yeah, we'll have some. See, I'm helping you. <laughs> Let me clean it out. You wondered why I was so sweet? Now we know.
as you recall when we were um, before we were spinning the honey I had to uncap them all and I scraped it all off and all of the residue the beeswax went into a container so we put it into this bag the filter bag and let it drip overnight and it's very heavy but we were able to uh, capture the honey from it and I'll show that to you in a minute but we're not done with this though this is going to be um, filtered so we get the, the beeswax out of it we're gonna make a nice brick of pure beeswax but here is the honey that came from it now you can see the foam on the top and that will will uh, remove that because we're gonna run this through the 625 650 micron filter and that will keep the foam out and have pure honey so, we so get I think it was worth drop. it. We get every yeah. drop of honey we can. Yeah, I think it was worth the effort. Well, we have a small honey operation on a farm. We want to make sure that it's of the highest quality. Uh, one way to assure that is to measure the moisture content in the honey. Now we do have a refractometer here, which we're going to use. I have to just put a dab of honey on the slide, close it up, and then I can look through the viewer and the light to measure the percentage. So come on over to the honey here. And if you look in the top here, we do have some foam on it. And I'm going to try to push some of that away so I can get a more representative sample of the of the honey. I'm just going to dip that down here. I just need a few drops. Probably more than I need. That should do it. Now I'm going to just close the, the slide and have to let it rest for one minute. Um, the content of water ideally should be between 15.5% and 18.6. Now they have uh, competitions for high quality honey and typically you have to be under 17% uh, in order to rate well here. So let's uh, let it rest a minute and we'll be right back to get a reading. Okay, I'm gonna look through the eyepiece on the refractometer to measure the percentage of water in the honey. Again, we're looking between 15.5 and 18.6. See how that comes out. Ooh, that's outstanding. It's about 16, just below 16. What I'm going to do is try to put the uh, phone, has a very small lens, I'm going to put it up to that so you can see what I'm looking at. The benefit of it being um, less than 17 is that there's no chance that we'll have any fermentation and the honey will be very stable. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, time to clean up. Um, wasn't it awesome? We got four gallons of honey and four gallons came from just these frames right here. That's enough for two deep boxes which are down below. We have four other deeps here and we chose not to pull any of the honey out of these like this one right here. You can see capped honey but the rest of it's built out and these are going to go back into the boxes. We're going to get a couple additional nukes. And a nuke is just a package of bees here in the spring. So this will be a good head start for them. And they will love having all this built out uh, frames. So time to get the tractor and haul all the gear out. I'm having my honey on my pumpkin baked oatmeal. What are you having? English muffins. But you don't call them English muffins. <laughs> I used to forget what they are. and Now we call them French buns. <laughs> look at that delicious honey. It does look great. Now I have to admit, I did sample a little bit of it yesterday. A little bit? <laughs> yeah, but it tastes different on food. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
And that's the thing, it's good on so many different things. Yeah. It's really good over baked oatmeal. Take a bite, try our honey. Yeah, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> good honey. Good honey. Very honey. good, very good, yeah. <laughs> you know, like honey is, is almost like wine or other, every batch is a little different. Yeah, it is. Depending on what the bees were eating. Yeah. This is a little blonder, more blonde than the last and A little one. bit. The last one had definitely more buckwheat. Yeah. 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 I think I'm going to plant our spare field in buckwheat. Mm, I think that'd be good. Have I another. like that little bit of buckwheat. Yeah. I, I describe the buckwheat almost as like a, a tint, like coffee in it or something. A honey tasting instead of a wine tasting. <laughs> Okay, it's probably in my imagination, but no, it is different. But he does he does tend to uh, elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for joining us on our honey journey today, and two days actually, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. bye.